we would be dealing largely with one dimensional flow uh, in this uh, in this module uh, later on when we uh, do uh, nozzle flows we will categorize the uh, nozzle flow as a quasi one dimensional flow i will explain what that is when we uh, when we come to that uh, part of the lecture but for now it's uh, sufficient to say that we will be looking at one dimensional flows what do we mean by one dimensional flow what we mean is the following if the flow properties change only along the flow direction and the velocity component along the flow direction alone is non zero that means there is only one velocity component and that is along the flow direction usually called the stream wise component so we may write the uh, equations that govern uh, frictionless adiabatic steady one dimensional compressible flow okay like this we are, we are not going to derive this uh, but we will write it so i assume that you know you would have um, gone through maybe some courses in fluid mechanics so you should be able to recognize this uh, these governing equations so this equation is uh, called the continuity equation or mass conservation equation this equation is usually called the momentum equation so when you write it in this form uh, you are writing it in the so called non conservative form and when you write it like this after using the continuity equation this is called the conservative form of the governing equation conservative because everything uh, inside is a perfect differential this you will recognize as the steady flow energy equation this of course is second law so you can see the interconnection between uh, thermodynamics and compressible flow okay notice that density now uh, is a function of two variables temperature and pressure and of course in the case of uh, an ideal gas it is uh, it obeys the ideal gas equation of state okay so v is a fluid dynamic quantity all the other uh, quantities are thermodynamic quantities so that's how compressible flow is linked to thermodynamics which is why uh, flow through nozzles is taught as a part of a course on applied thermodynamics it can also be taught as a part of a course on gas dynamics but customarily for mechanical engineering students it is taught as a part of applied thermodynamics for this reason only v is a fluid dynamic quantity and all the other quantities rho p h s they are all <coughs> thermodynamic properties and the two are very strongly related in compressible flows particularly flow through nozzles because flow through nozzles is such a ubiquitous example nozzles as well as uh, turbo machinery blade passages is such a ubiquitous uh, application for mechanical engineers this knowledge of uh, such flows is very very important now because all these um, uh, equations are perfect differentials this this and this we may actually integrate them then write them like this rho 1 v1 equal to rho 2 v2 so we have a flow field that is uh, station 1 station 2 we are simply integrating these equations between uh, those two stations <coughs> now one interesting aspect about this which is not uh, very clear uh, you know on the face of it is that discontinuous or wave like solutions are also admissible in other words density need not be continuous from 1 to 2 although they may be located just uh, let's say a very small distance apart okay so for example we may have a wave like this <coughs> so this could be one this could be two <coughs> and this could be a flow <coughs> across which we are seeing a wave by wave what i mean is something like a uh, sound wave okay Uh, which is pressure disturbance which is propagating in the fluid or if you go to a frame of reference where the wave is stationary and the fluid moves then that is the frame of reference that we are looking at here notice that across the wave properties uh, will be discontinuous all the properties for instance density uh, velocity enthalpy entropy all of them will be uh, discontinuous can be discontinuous that is permitted in this uh, i mean by this set of governing equations 
So, although 1 and 2 are uh, located uh, only a small distance apart, the thickness of the wave itself is very, very small, negligibly small. So, um, uh, 1 and 2 are located uh, only uh, an infinitesimal distance apart, but uh, the values are vastly different. So, if for example, let us say I plot uh, for example, density or something like that just um, uh, for the sake of illustration. So, density could go like this and then all of a sudden increase and then go like this. So, this is rho 1 and this is rho 2. Uh, for example, pressure could be like this then all of a sudden becomes something like this. So, the compressible form of the governing equations alone that we have listed here uh, admit such wave like solutions. Okay? These are perfect differentials which is why they admit wave like solutions. That is a very interesting aspect of uh, compressible flows and something that we will discuss in, uh, in some detail as we uh, go along because it is possible uh, to encounter wave like solutions uh, during the sort of applications that we discuss. For example, sound wave, we have already mentioned sound wave several times. That is a wave like solution which is admitted by this governing equation. Normal shock is another wave like solution which is uh, admitted by this governing equations and normal shocks are routinely encountered in the <coughs> diverging part of uh, nozzles and also in turbo machinery blade passages and it is very detrimental to performance. So, we need to have a good idea of why and why it is detrimental to performance and why it occurs and what uh, possible remedies can be, uh, can be adopt to make sure that. Uh, normal shocks do not appear in uh, in these sorts of applications. So, the first solution to this set of governing equations that we are going to uh, look at is acoustic wave propagation speed, basically uh, propagation of sound wave in a compressible media. Okay? So, let us say that you know we have a, uh, we have a, a sound wave which is uh, going out, let us say uh, this is a source. Uh, like for example, what happens when you throw a stone into a pond, right? Circular uh, spherical waves start emanating from the uh, from the location where the stone was dropped. They start traveling outward. So, uh, so initially it will look like this. And eventually, it may look something like this. So the radius of the spherical wave front eventually becomes uh, quite large. Okay. So what we do now is we take a, a small portion of this wave and try to uh, calculate the speed with which the wave propagates. So, basically what we are doing here is to take a small part of this uh, wave front, small compared to its radius. So, that it essentially appears, so the, the, uh, the, the flow propagates like this, right? And this is a one dimensional flow field. Uh, when you look at this portion of the wave, you can see that it is a one dimensional flow field because the flow, the velocity is non-zero only along the flow direction. So, in fact, we can illustrate the uh, situation like this. Notice that there is no curvature that is shown in the wave front here because the radius of the sphere is uh, much, much larger than uh, the uh, size that we are looking at here. So, we are taking a small portion and then studying it. Okay? So, you can see that uh, from an observer who is stationary on the ground as this uh, spherical wave fronts propagate, it uh, looks as if the wave front is moving with the speed which is equal to the speed of sound. So, this part of the fluid is so the, uh, so the, uh, the waves propagate outward from the location where the stone is dropped. So, the pond is very quiet in this part. So, this is called the quiescent fluid. And there is some uh, up and down motion uh, in this part uh, behind this wave front as the waves are going through and that is the situation we are looking at here. So, this the fluid behind this wave front may acquire a small velocity as a result of passage of the wave and that is what we have indicated here. The wave itself moves with the speed equal to speed of sound. That is what an observer who is sitting on the shore or the, uh, uh, the banks of the pond, that is what he or she will see the wave, uh, the wave front moving out like this, the water behind the wave front acquiring a small speed, maybe up and down actually, but it is acquiring a small speed, but the water ahead of the uh, wave front is quiet. 
Now, let us say that we move to a frame of reference where this observer who was sitting on the shore starts running along with the, with the wave front, with this small piece of wave front. Then the situation looks like this. So, this is a frame of reference where moving frame of reference where the observer is moving with the wave. So, in this frame of reference, the, it seems to the, uh, it seems that uh, the fluid is approaching the observer with a speed equal to the wave speed. And when the observer looks back, the flow seems to be receding with the speed, which is not equal to the wave speed, but something slightly less than that or something slightly different from that, less or more, we will see, okay. But something slightly different from that, not exactly the same, slightly different. The emphasis here is on the word slightly different. That is the solution we are looking for. Other solutions are possible. We are right now looking for a solution where it is only slightly different. And I am saying slightly because the uh, after I drop the stone, uh, there is a slight disturbance only to the uh, to the uh, to the water. Right? The water is not like boiling and bubbling or anything like that. There is a small disturbance. You see some waves uh, which are going through. For example, if there are leaves on the water, you will see them like you know, uh, bobbing up and down, maybe moving slightly downstream also. It is only a slight disturbance. So, that is the situation. So, V2 is uh, different from V1, less or more, we do not know. So, this is the solution that we are seeking. So, as a result of going through the acoustic wave, the flow properties change by an infinitesimal amount and the process is assumed to be isentropic. There is no heat addition here uh, and the changes are sufficiently small that we will assume the process to be isentropic, which means that the solution that we are seeking to this uh, set of governing equations is one where S2 is equal to S1. So, we may write V2 as being V1 plus dV1. The plus sign here does not, uh, should not suggest to you that V2 is more than V1. It only says that uh, V2 is slightly different from V1, okay, and so on. P2 equal to P1 plus dP1, rho 2 equal to rho 1 plus d rho 1. So, we substitute this into uh, the original equations. Remember, this one was rho 1 V1 equal to uh, rho 2 V2. And this one was uh, P1 plus rho 1 V1 square is equal to P2 plus rho 2 V2 square. So, we substitute it into the first two equations. And because dV1, dP1, d rho 1 are uh, much, much smaller than 1, they are already very small, and products of these quantities will be even smaller. So, we may neglect those sorts of terms. Okay? And if you do that, then you end up with an expression that looks like this. Okay? For example, uh, if I take this, I will keep the rho 1 v 1. So, this quantity here, if, uh, if you look at this product, okay? so that product is rho 1 v 1 <coughs> plus rho 1 d v 1 plus v 1 d rho 1 plus d rho 1 d v 1. <coughs> so, this is a product term. So, we say that this is uh, negligibly small, we throw it out and this rho 1 v 1 cancels this rho 1 v 1. So, we end up with an equation like this and the same thing is done here also. <coughs> now, if I rearrange, combine these two equations, I may write like this, dP1 over d rho 1 is equal to V1 square, which means that V1 equal to A is equal to square root of dP over d rho, S equal to constant. Remember, we have already said S is equal to constant. And we said that A equal to V1 because we are in a frame of reference where we are moving with the wave, which means we are moving with the speed equal to speed of sound. So, that means V1 equal to A. So, this is the expression for speed of sound in a compressible medium. So, this is the wave like solution that the governing equations admit for the propagation of an infinitesimally weak wave across which the change in properties uh, is isentropic. <coughs> now,
Now, in case the fluid is a calorically perfect gas like say air, okay, since the process is isentropic from TDS relation, we can get this. So, dP over d rho, uh, we may get to be equal to gamma RT or the speed of sound itself to be equal to square root of gamma RT for a calorically perfect gas only, not for steam or refrigerant. Notice that we explicitly did not use the fact that S2 equal to S1 when deriving this, but we stipulated that uh, the changes are infinitesimally small. Okay? So, the stipulation that the change across the, the change in properties be infinitesimally small across the wave requires the process to be isentropic. If it were not the case, then the process will not be isentropic. We will derive that solution next when we relax the requirement that uh, the change should be infinitesimally small or process should be isentropic. Once you relax that, there is another wave like solution which is admissible which is the normal shock wave solution across which the entropy increases. <coughs> okay? So, although we did not explicitly use S2 equal to S1 in deriving this, the requirement that the change in property be infinitesimally small demands that the process should be isentropic. <coughs> so, uh, what we will do in the uh, next lecture is to now that we have derived the expression for speed of sound, we will take a, a closer look at Mach number and uh, then move on to look at certain other fundamental aspects of one dimensional flows. <coughs>